directs you and prescribes right where you are. Joining us this afternoon is Stuart Long. He's the CEO of Infobionics. It is a company that's on the cutting edge of telemedicine, and I am so grateful we could get him this afternoon. Thank you for being with us. Hi, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. I'm going to get you to maybe give us a brief walkthrough, just a hypothetical. Someone has a cold, maybe, or sinusitis, and uh, they want to make that virtual appointment. What does it look like? Well, um, it's actually it's pretty easy. You know, you and I are having a telehealth visit right now. Mm -hmm. So if you were my doctor and I had a cold or some kind of flu symptom or even something even a little more severe, it's a, basically a call to the physician's office and having a conversation. Uh, during the pandemic, it was typically that was the only option, whereas today you have the option typically to take a virtual visit or go in person. But once you've had a virtual visit, the convenience uh, of doing it from your home, not having to travel, certainly is uh, a big benefit. And being able to accomplish the same thing with your physician, having the insurance cover that and be able to get on about your business with little impact to your schedule and your day, but at the same time addressing your health concern, uh, you know, either 100% or at least enough to a degree that would subsequent, you know, subsequently have you go to the doctor's office for something, uh, you know, past what a virtual care mm -hmm. visit could do. So it's a, it's it's a it's a great experience. I, I I do them personally now. Almost I try to do them almost exclusively, with the exception of maybe going to the dentist. <laughs> now, how soon in the future, or are those uh, pieces that are part of the process? Are there watches out there now that can link up sort of electronically, maybe give your blood pressure, give those sort of things? Are those devices available yet? There, there are. There's a multitude of devices. The, the watches themselves are pretty much at this point regulated to trying to detect your uh, something wrong with your heart. Uh -huh. And so they can give some, some clinical information about your heartbeat. And there are uh, vendors that are approved by the FDA that can actually look and um, give us some assessment. It doesn't actually diagnose if you have a problem, but it's suggestion of that is something that the FDA has authorized them to do. And so if your watch then suggests that would give you a great indication to call your physician, tell them what the watch had found to you, and then they would likely either have you send data from your watch to them uh, via email that the watch can give you on a PDF file, or they would um, uh, do a virtual visit, assess you virtually, and then if they indicate that there's something broader need, they would bring you to the office and probably do some more tests. Uh, but there are other things where blood pressure cuffs or even trying to do your blood oxygen, you know, during COVID, that was a very important measurement, making sure that your blood oxygen rates were high enough versus uh, the respiratory uh, uh, complications that came with COVID would impact that. And there are devices in market that actually have the ability for you to take and go and do it your home and actually just look at the reading and tell your doctor via a telehealth mm -hmm. conference or uh, some can actually communicate. Uh, and there are kits available from certain vendors that have uh -huh. all of these devices in combination that you can connect and th those automatically connect through a telehealth provider that the physician uses. Now, you mentioned this, and you went past it pretty fast, but I want people to know he did say this. There, are, there is insurance coverage for a lot of people, and many states are making it mandatory that if it is the type of visit where you would go in person, then if the insurance company were to pay, then they must pay for this visit, too. So that's reassuring to a lot of people, especially, Philip, in, in South Georgia, where there are very few hospitals and doctors. Now there's the telemedicine that continues to be in the gap. Yes, that's correct. So the, the insurance coverage is really one of the key elements that, that's helped driving the adoption rates. I think the pandemic was, you know, despite the, the terrible nature of what occurred throughout the pandemic, one of the benefits was the acceleration for the insurance providers and the government to lean into the practice of telehealth and therefore being able to put the infrastructure in place from a reimbursement perspective and uh, allow the vendors uh, to work directly with the patients and themselves as well as the healthcare providers mm -hmm. to kind of bring all of that in together um, to fit within the framework of the healthcare system. And that was a, a really big step to get the reimbursement and the coverage the and same huge. as is, is if you were going to go to an office. Huge for South Georgia, as I said, and for all of Georgia. Thank you so much for being with us. Keep up the good work, Stuart. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Coming up on Midday, she seems to have the energy of a teenager, but she ain't no teenager. Dolly Parton is 77. News.